Hello everyone, welcome to the Power we're playing with CJ and we're focusing on uh, the New York Islanders finally firing Jack Capilano, essentially three years after I said that they, you know, should, uh, back in 2014. Um, it's a disaster in, in Long Island, obviously Doug Waits is going to be the interim coach, they're talking to Gerard Gallant about, you know, maybe taking over there, I like that potential move, um, but today the first post-Capilano practice, uh, Strom and Calvin DeHaan, had a little fight during one of the drills. So, yeah, things are going great in Long Island. Awesome. Good job, Gar. You know, you look at, and Ronick said this last night during the NBC broadcast uh, after the Blackhawks Avalanche game. You know, Matt Molson has a role, has a niche there with uh, John Tavares, and he fits in very well. They trade uh, Matt Molson. Kyla Pozo settles into that role very well. They let him walk in free agency. You know, in so many ways, it, this comes so much back on the more on the front office than it does on on Capilano, Even though, again, I think he his expiration date was three years ago. My, if I was taking bets on who the Islanders coach to, to open next year would be, I'd say Dougie Waite. I'd say they give him. The thing is, I think Gallant, Vegas is going to push big for Gallant. That's going to be their guy. And there's a lot of familiarity between some other Florida Panthers guys, former Florida Panthers guys in that front office, and I think Gallant's going to be the head coach in Las Vegas. I could be wrong, but, you know, again, I, I don't know what else you want me to say about Capuano that I haven't already said. I mean, you know, not the best coach, but you can't make chicken salad out of chicken shit. And, unfortunately, this Islanders organization gave him chicken shit to work with. And, you know, every time they turn a they, – they're another organization that takes one step forward and then, like, five steps back. Every time it looks like, oh, the Islanders are back. They've won a playoff series. Sleeper pick in the East. Oh, nope. This is where we're at. So, you know, again, I would – um if I were the ownership group, I would just gut the front office entirely at the end of the season as well. But, you know, we'll see what happens. I mean, this does not bode well for John Tavares – uh, staying there when he's a free agent next year. Um, so it's uh, just one of those things. I think the Islanders are going to royally fuck themselves. And again, I've always been in the mindset that Tavares will resign a uh, you know a long-term extension with the team. But I, now with the way this season's gone, you know the way you know they waited too long to fire Gallant. I mean. Uh, Capilano, you know, if they get a guy like Gallant, you know, maybe that changes things. But I just don't see John Tavares having a long-term future in Long Island. There's just no upside for him to sign the extension at all. You know, the on-ice situation is a disaster. Barclays has become a nightmare. And the tax situation in New York is not conducive to, you know, the uh, having a healthy bank. I mean, you get robbed playing in New York, I should say, by the uh, state and federal government. So, anyway, that's all I got this episode of the Power Play with CJ. Stay tuned for episodes throughout the season and beyond. Later, guys.